Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rifle Chair YouTube channel. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to zero one of these rifles. This is the Model 9130 Mosin Legant. And many people out there seem to think that these are kind of obscure rifles in that they're very, very cheap. So as, as a result of that, they are crap. Cheap doesn't necessarily mean crap. Cheap can sometimes mean simply affordable and these are very affordable rifles and they're an extremely good option for people who are, who are looking at getting, getting into shooting. Rifles generally speaking for the most part are generally quite affordable. The ammunition that we need to feed them is not. However, with the Model 9130 or the SKS rifles, new shooters can shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and keep on shooting, buy another crate of ammunition and keep on going. So long as you're able to care and uh, clean the rifle appropriately for corrosive ammunition, you can keep shooting forever. <laughs> These are great rifles, especially for the new shooter looking at trying to get in but doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, however, let's not, get a, let's not get into that. Let's get into how we zero this rifle to make every single one of those uh, affordable rounds count. Essentially what we're going to do is uh, make a, a modification to the front sight right here. This front sight has been, has been pushed up. I've removed the front sight, turned it upside down, locked it in a vise, and with a punch I've raised the front sight. And uh, using a very small file, we're going to ma ma manipulate the front sight until we're zeroed. And uh, we'll do a, a test firing at 100 meters, and we'll do a test firing at 200 meters, uh, initially with the 100 meter sight setting, and then we'll try the, second, the 200 meter sight setting at 200 meters and see what the difference is. So I hope that uh, you get something out of it and that everybody walks away a little bit more enlightened. These are great rifles and uh, when you actually spend a little, little bit of care and attention tuning them in a little bit, you'll be happy. You'll be very, very happy. A lot of glare off the uh, sun, glinting off the rear sight. Oh well, blackened it as best I could. Now ah, I gotta be able to do something about that. First, the first group that was fired worked out really well. In fact, I think for horizontal, um, I only had to take off a little bit. Second group, I've actually uh, moved the uh, horizontal as well. Shot another five round group. I think the vertical is where we need it now. And we're just trying to get the, the um, horizontal alignment. Then we'll take her out at 200 meters to see what we can do. Okay, so here's uh, <coughs> group number one. After adjusting the, uh, punching the front side up, and, uh, and I've had to uh, remove a little bit of material. And uh, previously, my group was way up here at 100 meters. Obviously, I need to drift the front side a little bit, and I did with this one right here. I also removed just a little bit more material, not much. And, uh, well, it's not perfectly zeroed, but it's, it's pretty close. So this first group is, uh, I'm shooting at the 200 meter target, but I'm retaining the 100 meter sight setting. The second target, I'll shoot with the 200 meter sight setting. that sucker cooled down and then we'll uh, shoot five more rounds at 200. Okay while the rifle cools down I'm going to give you just a bit of a 
explanation of how I did things. <clears throat> First of all, you're going to have to get yourself a little file. Well, this little file here that you see um, is just small enough. I managed to get it at Canadian Tire, just small enough to get it inside the globe so you can access the front front post. Now, you you will find that when you're hammering the <laughs> hammering on the front post is that uh, uh, the actual metal for that front sight, for the front post, is actually quite malleable, quite soft. So you're going to see a bit of mushrooming with the uh, with the steel as you punch it through. <clears throat> Additionally, don't do what I tried to do, and that's realize that you push it up too far and then try to hammer it back down from the top. Right? Don't even bother doing that. All you're going to do is bend your front sight over. Don't do it. Okay? Learn from my example. Don't do that. Just file it down to where it needs to be. You may take off you may you may need to take off a fair amount of material, you may not. I found that the front uh, the front set was fairly easy to file. You don't have don't need to press too hard. Like I said it's a malleable soft uh, form of steel. Um, essentially what you're gonna need to also get yourself is a good quality punch. Now this one here is a three thirty seconds punch. And uh, wear safety goggles when you're doing this, because you don't want a piece of uh, steel flying up and hitting you in the eye. You're going to need to get yourself a good punch, because like I said, it's, it's, a, it's fairly small in diameter, and you're going to have to push on it pretty hard. You can't do this without a vise. And uh, if you have some um, rubber inserts for your vise, that's good, because um, otherwise you're going you're gonna to scratch up the uh, uh, either side of the grip of, of, of the site pretty, um, pretty good if you don't use rubber braces in your vise. And that's essentially it, folks. Um, easy peasy. Easy peasy fix to a problem with Mosin Nagants. This is the Mosin Nagant I picked up from Corwin Arms. If you haven't uh, visited Corwin, Ar uh, Corwin Arms site, do so. Um, it's a great website. Mark Nova Corwin Arms is great. Really easy to deal with. Highly recommend the place. And uh, I've uh, fixed trigger on it. We're now running about a, a three and a half to four pound trigger on this Mosin again makes it really easier to shoot. And now that the front post is uh, pretty much um, ironed out, what a shooter. It cycles beautifully. I polished the chamber. I've had no sticky no sticky chamber issues since I've done that. Um, and uh, great rifle. Would I put my life on it? Would I, you know, in a life or death situation? You freaking believe I would. No doubt in my mind, this is a good rifle. And uh, it's got a good enough barrel on it, shoots good enough, and we'll go out and look at the groups here in just a second. I actually did bring my prescription eyeglass um, today, so I can actually see the target. <laughs> so it uh, should be more of a true depiction of what the rifle is able to do. Let's go have a look at the target. All right, here is our uh, 200 meter target with the 100 meter sight setting. And uh, here's the uh, same target, but with the 200 meter sight setting. One, two, three, four, five. So uh, maybe I do need to drift it a little bit back more to the uh, to the left. Um, so not wonderful, but it's consider considerably better than it was before. Even with the front sight on the 100 meter uh, setting, I was printing up here. Now at, uh, that's where it should be for 100 meters, and 200 meters we're pretty much exactly where we need to be. You know, this is this is good news. You got to do it. You know you want to get this thing running for you the way it's supposed to. You can do it. You don't need any help. You don't need to send it to a gunsmith. This is something you can do at home. You've got the tools. I'm sure you do. Make it happen. It's right for Chair signing off. And as always, Maple Leaf up.